All right, in this video, we're gonna look at how to calculate the expected value or the mean of our probability distribution. Now, in the previous video, we looked at how to calculate the general probabilities between particular values, the cumulative probability distribution, and how to calculate the median or other percentiles. Now, here, we're gonna calculate the mean. And in order to calculate the mean, which is uh, often referred to as the expected value, uh, what we're going to calculate is the function times x. And we're gonna calculate that area. That's how this works. So we're gonna use the same example that we did in the previous video, the same function. We verified that this was a probability distribution if we use a constant of 12 here on this particular interval. And so if we want to find the mean, we saw that the median was like 0.61, I believe, and there, thereabouts. And so what we're going to do is we're going to calculate where the mean is. All right, so that's going to be, uh, let's call it the E of X. That's going to be our integral from 0 to 1 of X times 12x squared minus x cubed. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the 12 out, and then I'm going to distribute my x. And that's going to give me x cubed minus x to the fourth. And then when I integrate that, I'm going to get one quarter x to the fourth minus one fifth x to the fifth. And I'm going to evaluate that from zero to one. And that's going to give me 12 times um, one over 20. 12 over 20 is, uh, let's see, I cancel it, 4, 3 over 5. So that's about 0.6. So this distribution is not exactly symmetric, but the mean and the median are actually fairly close to each other. 0 0.6 is uh, the mean, and 0 0.61 approximately is the median. So it's not exactly symmetric, but it is similar in terms of its symmetry. Now, you may have noticed that there, this calculation is actually somewhat similar to finding the center of mass. Um, if you've done physics problems in calculus, uh, this is, in fact, if you push, if you, the, the symmetry between this kind of a problem and the center of mass is very apparent if you're in two variables. It's a little more opaque in a one variable problem. Um, it's, it, this is similar in one dimension, but if you go to the second dimension um, in, in X and Y, it becomes extremely clear um, how the, this, this uh, expected value, the mean is exactly the same as the formulas for the, the center of mass. The center is the mean um, in a, um, center of mass problem. Now, the other thing that we can calculate about our probability distributions using calculus is the um, variance. And from the variance, of course, uh, the variance is the square of the standard deviation. So uh, we would first have to calculate the variance before we can calculate the standard deviation. And so what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the variance. Now, the formal definition of the variance is to multiply the function, the original probability density function, by x minus mu squared, Now, where mu is the mean. And um, so first, you would have to calculate the expected value, which we got 0.64. And then, um, do this calculation, you would have to foil this out, you would it'd be it's a mess. 
Um, so this is not necessarily always the most efficient way. I mean, you will get the correct answer assuming you make no arithmetic mistakes, but this is not always the most efficient way to finding um, the value of the variance. And so there is an alternative formula that depends on understanding the concept of moments. Now, the, the nth moment of a, of a probability distribution is given by essentially the expected value of x to the n. Um, so the expected value itself, the mean, is the first moment because we just found the expected value of x and we just multiplied the function by x and then we got a number. But you can do this for any power of x. So the expected uh, uh, value of x squared, the second moment, we would put x squared times the function and then we would calculate. And then there are third moments and fourth moments and so on. Um, this is a procedure that um, is typically useful for calculating parameters in a problem um, and for calculating things like um, uh, kurtosis and skew, uh, which are beyond the scope of this video. Uh, but the variance is going to depend on both the first and the second moments. And so it can be shown, which I'm not going to do here, that the variance can be calculated using the second moment minus the first moment squared. And that is going to be a much, a much faster way of doing the calculation for the variance than um, finding the, um, I mean, both problems are gonna, you're gonna have to find the mean in order to find the variance, but the X minus mu term is squared here. So you would have to FOIL it out. Whereas in this example, um, you're, you're just calculating X squared times the whole function. So there's no FOILing and distributing that you have to worry about. So let's actually calculate the variance using this shortcut procedure and the mean that we found earlier. So the variance, uh, actually let's not do that. Let's just find e to the x squared first. Now the, uh, we're gonna find the second moment first because that's part of our formula. And so I'm gonna, in the nth moment formula, I'm gonna replace this with a squared. And my function is going to be the probability function that we were working with earlier. So everything outside zero to one is equal to zero so that we integrate on that region. And then we multiply x squared by 12 x squared minus x cubed. And as in the, the, when I calculated the expected value, I'm going to move the 12 out front. And then I'm going to distribute my x squared in order to get x to the fourth minus x to the fifth. And when I integrate that, I'm going to get 12 times one fifth x to the fifth minus one sixth x to the sixth between zero and one, which is going to give me 12 times one over 30. And 12 over 30 reduces to one over, one, like I can take a six out, two over five. Now that's not the variance, that's just the first part of the formula. The variance. is this number that we just calculated two divided by five minus the mean that we calculated earlier, which was three over five squared. 
So two over five minus nine over 25. is going to be, uh, if you multiply this by five, you get 10 over 25. So this is one over 25. That's the variance. And then the standard deviation is then one over five because it's the square root of that. Now we could verify this and I'm not going to actually go through all the math because it is really super tedious, which is why we have this alternative formula. but if we wanted to do this by the definition, then our variance would be, we would integrate from, again, in this problem from zero to one, because that's where our function is defined, we would plug in our three over five here, and then we would plug in our 12, times x squared minus x cubed function. And again, this, this is why this becomes super tedious. Um, even if I pull out my 12, zero to one, um, then I'm still gonna have to first multiply this guy out, so x squared minus um, six over five x plus nine over 25. But then I'm gonna have to distribute it through this. <laughs> and so when I'm done, I'm gonna have a lot of terms and there's more arithmetic, more opportunity to make mistakes. But if I go through and I, I'm gonna leave this for you to sort of practice on, but if I go through and I do the same procedure and I integrate all the way through, I should end up with one over 25 when I'm finished. <laughs>